inside of Microsoft today. And so this is the key of talking about how we take the over $10 billion of R&D and make it real. I think one of the big shifts for Microsoft and the flexibility is in the past we said if it's not going to be a billion dollar business, it's incubation for us. And we're not going to put a lot of energy into it. And now it's about how do we bring all this rich innovation out rapidly, whether or not it's going to be a billion dollar business or not, up front, who knows. But we're continuing to innovate and release these innovations as time goes on. So that's part of the key of what you're seeing. Here you see the flexible uh, OLED panels, uh, and you'll already see some examples announced. So I think it was the latest one was probably CES, where you saw LG and a few other partners talk about this being a reality. Uh, and Microsoft R&D a few years ago, I saw where they were actually having these panels up on glass displays, and they're fully interactive. Um, we have a lot of patents for actually putting the touch capability on top of it. So this screen here is a 4K screen, which will be shipping as we announced in September uh, for the Surface Hubs. And in this screen, it's actually a lot of patents to make sure we can laminate the touch display directly to it, which was really key. Um, so very different. Uh, the refresh rate also is much different than what you'd see in other screens. It's the only 120 hertz refresh screen out there. So the other innovations that come in devices like this as you're watching the video, and just for time reasons, you're going to throw a lot of information at you and then take a pause as the video ends, is we have the monitors that are built in. So the cameras are built in to track you in the whole room, so whoever's speaking, on the other side, we're using Skype or Skype for Business on an uh, iPad or a Macintosh or a Surface uh, or a phone, as I Skype often now for Skype for Business. You have the ability to pass that video globally and go around. Um, the second thing you may not see is there's a second hidden sensor underneath this where we're doing infrared tracking like you have in the Connect. So I can do 3D positioning and actually focus in on who's talking and what you're doing or drawing in the screen. We'll go to the interactive whiteboard in a minute here so you'll see how that functionality works but great technology built into the device. Um, it also has the ability to go and do wireless display, so I have the ability to connect external devices. You'll see there's a little NFC tag here, so I can just pair my device, share information, and connect to that information on the devices. So again, a little different than what you might have had in past technologies. In Microsoft Pass, you would actually have a round table on the desk like you saw in the last conference room we were in. Now we have a single screen that can do all of that for you and interact, and this is a full Windows 10 rollout, so I don't know how much you've been reading about where we go with Windows 10 and the continuum of devices, so everything from industrial devices and Internet of Things, all the way up to full-scale uh, Windows 10 and devices like the Surface Hub, being able to fully interact with those applications. Uh, again, this isn't limited to just Microsoft integration, so you can plug your iPad in, you can plug your Android device in, and uh, because we're talking about technologies like Skype and like Office, which are available on those devices, you have the ability to fully interact with things like OneNote. So you'll see the whiteboarding is built on OneNote. And that's another major shift when you talk about flexibility. In the past, every group we had was kind of in a silo. So this Surface Hub and the original Perceptive Pixel acquisition was a siloed product. Now we innovate all the technology together, and that's been key to Satya's strategy. So instead of creating a separate whiteboard app, we've added whiteboarding to OneNote. So now if you're on OneNote anywhere in the world and you're looking at this conversation we're having, you see real time how people are drawing and you can add your comments in and put your name on there. And we'll see who's adding those comments and be able to collaborate and be able to talk whether you can just view or interact with the data. So lots of capability built on that. Um, a couple other things you may not understand on the innovation, and I'm going to jump on just a couple slides here just so you can see. In fact, I'll actually try the touch screen. Again, this is pre-release. We'll see how that works. So this is an interesting one. Um, this is uh, Shara, Sarah Sherman, and uh, Sarah, hopefully that was your old uh, actually did it here. And one of the things that happened with Sarah is we actually helped uh, create a device to help, help her here. So this is what you're going to see in a minute. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this kind of video is you don't normally think of Microsoft and innovation outside of products we release directly. This comes from our R&D partnerships. So you probably saw Harry again in lead of our R&D as part of Satya's new announcement. This is part of our R&D group that took technology out of Connect and enabled us to provide capabilities for improving lives and productivity. This is something you might not have thought about Microsoft five or 10 years ago, but something we're doing on a regular basis today. And I think that's really important to understand. So it's out of the box flexibility that you probably wouldn't have seen before. The next example, and I got just a couple again, and then we'll open it up here, is really talking about um, 
Braylon O'Neill. Braylon is a super exciting kid. Uh, just like any other kid, he wants to run and jump around, and everything was great except for when he was born, he didn't have bones in the bottom half of his legs. So one of the challenges they had when we were working and called us up and figured out what we could do to help was the issue that um, the prosthetic devices are actually very expensive to build out of titanium, and they couldn't always get the gate right. And so the idea around this was we were able to use the Connect technology to watch the gate and then send that via Windows 10 to have a prototype built on a 3D printer so they could check the gate out as he's walking. And that became really important uh, innovation that we're able to provide now in the medical community to actually improve the capabilities there of what we're providing. The last example is interesting because it's a cloud example, and it's Wu Fang. And the idea around this was really how do we change our capabilities around modeling. And here you're seeing some of the uh, non-video playing. So this is where I tell you that I'm on a pre-release version, if you saw Windows 10 on my machine, and a pre-release version of Office. <laughs> so for time reasons, rather than actually not starting the video up, I'll tell you the story here. When they came to us, uh, one of the big challenges they had in genetic uh, modeling was everything was machine learning on-premise. And we asked them, well, what does it cost to run a model? And they said, well, it's about three months and $95 million. We actually moved that up to machine learning inside of Microsoft, a service available in Azure, and this is why there's just so many services. We're able to do over 400 models a day at pennies a model. And so we're actually helping innovate to cure cancer now using our machine learning. Uh, once again, this is using some on-premise capability they have in reducing wet lab work. So now when they get results that are promising, that's what's driving the wet lab work as opposed to doing everything one off on the uh, experimentation. So hopefully these are some ways you don't think about Microsoft when I talk about innovation that we're really truly changing how we're doing things. Um, so we are into some of the pure research. We are into taking commercial products that we have every day and integrating those together. If you look at a lot of technology inside of this visualization here um, for the camera technologies, a lot of that again came out of the Kinect technology, the sound differentiation. So we're tying those different product themes together. And you see that even with Xbox, the next generation of that runs on Windows 10. So that really talks about how we tie this stuff together for the enterprise space. Um, the other area when I take to more of what's real today is really talking through pulling this into visualizations of data. So now let me duplicate my screen here. And I've got a sample environment that I've logged into with a demo account. And have you seen Power BI at Microsoft? Uh, it looks like a couple of people might have seen Power BI. So with Power BI, one of the advantages we have with Power BI is to be able to pull data from any source. So here I have the ability to connect to a plethora of different sources. And in this case, you'll see a bunch of sources on the left-hand side. It could be Salesforce, SAP, it could be on-prem, it could be IBM's cloud, Amazon's cloud, Google, Microsoft, doesn't really matter here. We have all the standard interfaces to connect to um, and a lot of partnerships that we've announced around this. So this is where you saw Mark Benioff talking about BI integration and then you saw the adapters come in play. The beauty of this is I no longer have to put a very expensive BI infrastructure on premise. I can leave my data where it sits and do the visualizations very easily either in an HTML5 screen as you see here on a Microsoft or non-Microsoft device or native applications. So if I have an iPad or an Android device, I can take that device and we have native applications for BI on those devices. So hopefully this is something you wouldn't have thought of. We, you wouldn't see me up here talking about in your mind a couple of years ago. It's actually absolutely in the forefront of everything that we do now. In fact, the first application we released on our current version of Power BI was for the iPad, even before it was Windows in that case. So we're not holding up innovation just to make sure Windows is always the first. We're doing it as the products are available and making sure that we're making everything as much of a first class citizen as we can. We're giving choice and hoping we're differentiating. I still love the Surface device. I'll tell you it's my primary device every day. I love the fact that uh, even with my challenges of being left-handed, I tend to have my uh, hand touch the screen that it disables when I actually pick up the pen and actually go to start writing, which I do a lot of writing. So a lot of my customers I talk to at the business level think it's rude to type, so I'll flip it over and I'll start writing. I disable the screen when the pen comes within an inch of the screen or an inch and a half of the screen, so I don't have to worry about my palm actually overwriting anything or change my habits of how I actually write. It's a very powerful device. And it also has the flexibility of turning into a complete tablet around the device. When I look at the horizon that was mentioned from IBM Lenovo, uh, not IBM, sorry, uh, as they broke off, as if Lenovo's horizon device came out, um, you know, you would think of that more on this line. Because in that case, there isn't a keyboard attached to it. A uh, very flexible device. It is uh, a little heavier because it's bigger, but it's still pretty light. It's about a five pound device 
the Horizon 19 inch, if I'm correct, five or six pounds, something around that. Um, could be a little off, but I don't know all the hardware specs on it. But I know carrying it doesn't feel too heavy for a 19 inch screen. Um, you do sacrifice some battery life on those, so a couple hours where on this I'm getting, you know, four to six hours depending on what I'm doing. And those are the trade offs in, in a lot of the chain. Really? You guys are giving me stuff. It's like, good. It's like instantaneous, isn't it? Kindergartners or first graders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would look like this, actually.